before he became a cardinal. He was a despised prisoner. His name is Ignatius Kuhn. His own country united against him. Yet he stood tall as a shepherd. He suffered 30 years in prison. He underwent tremendous pain. His heart was always united to the heart of Pope John Paul II, Cardinal Kuhn. Cardinal Kung was the Roman Catholic Bishop of Shanghai and the Apostolic Administrator of Su Shu in Nanking since 1950, a post he held until his death. He was ordained a priest almost 70 years ago on May 28, 1930, and consecrated a bishop 50 years ago, the first native Chinese Bishop of Shanghai, on the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary, October 7, 1949, after the Communists had already taken over China. Cardinal Kung was created a cardinal by Pope John Paul II in Pectore. In the heart of the Pope, without announcement to anyone in the world including Cardinal Kung, 20 years ago in 1979 at the age of 78, when the Cardinal was serving a life sentence in isolation in China, living in the heart of Pope John Paul II for 12 years, Cardinal Kung was finally proclaimed a cardinal to the world on June 28, 1991 by Pope John Paul II. At the time of Cardinal's death, Cardinal Kung was the oldest cardinal. The story of Cardinal Kung is the story of a faithful shepherd and of a hero. Cardinal Kung was a man who refused to renounce God and his church despite the consequences of a life sentence from the Chinese Communist government. The months before his arrest in 1955, the then Bishop Kung stood by his clergy and faithful of China in spite of many offers of safe passage out of China. He was a man who inspired millions of his countrymen to follow his example of fidelity to the Roman Catholic faith and who preserved the Roman Catholic Church in a communist country for the past 50 years. He was a man who became a symbol for world leaders in all countries in their fight for religious freedom. No account of religious persecutions or of any human rights violations in China is complete without a few words about His Eminence, Cardinal Kung. Bishop Kung had been Bishop of Shanghai and Apostolic Administrator of two other dioceses for only five years before he was arrested by the Chinese government. In just five short years, Bishop Kung became one of the most feared enemies of the Chinese Communists a man who commanded both the attention and devotion of the country's then three million Roman Catholics and the highest respect of his brother bishops in China and inspired thousands to offer their lives up to God. In defiance of the communist-created and sanctioned Chinese Catholic Patriotic Association, Bishop Kung personally supervised the Legion of Mary, a religious organization of the laity dedicated to the veneration of the Blessed Mother Mary. As a result, many members of the Legion of Mary chose to risk arrest in the name of their God, of their Church, and of their Bishop. Hundreds of Legion of Mary members, including many students, were arrested and sentenced to 10, 15, or 20 years or more of hard labor. In the midst of persecutions, Bishop Kung declared 1952 the Marian Year in Shanghai. During that year, there was to be uninterrupted 24 hours daily recitation of the Rosary in front of a statue of Our Lady of Fatima, which toured all of the parishes of Shanghai. The holy statue finally arrived at Christ the King Church, where a major arrest of the priests had just taken place only a month ago. Bishop Kung visited that church and personally led the Rosary while hundreds of the armed police looked on. At the end of the rosary, leading the congregation, Bishop Kung prayed, Holy Mother, we do not ask you for a miracle. We do not beg you to stop the persecutions, but we beg you to support us who are very weak. Knowing that he and his priests would soon be arrested, Bishop Kung trained hundreds of catechists to pass on the Roman Catholic faith in the diocese to future generations. 
The heroic efforts of these catechists, their martyrdom, and that of many faithful and clergy contributed to the vibrant underground Roman Catholic Church in China today. Bishop Kung's place in the hearts of his parishioners was very well summed up by the Shanghai Youth Group in a 1953 New Year Youth Rally when they said, Bishop Kung, in darkness you light up our path, you guide us on our treacherous journey, you sustain our faith and the traditions of the church. You are the foundation rock of our church in Shanghai. On September 8, 1955, the press around the world reported in shock the overnight arrest of Bishop Kung, along with more than 200 priests and church leaders in Shanghai. Months after his arrest, he was taken out to a mob struggle session in the old dog racing stadium in Shanghai. Thousands were ordered to attend and to hear the bishop's public confession of his crimes. With his hands tied behind his back, wearing a Chinese pajama suit, the five-foot-tall bishop was pushed forward to the microphone to confess. To the shock of the security police, they heard a righteous loud cry of Long live Christ the King! Long live the Pope! from the bishop. The crowd responded immediately Long live Christ the King! Long live Bishop Kung! Bishop Kung was quickly dragged away to the police car and disappeared from the world until he was brought to trial in 1960. Bishop Kung was sentenced to life imprisonment. The night before he was brought to trial, the chief prosecutor asked once again for his cooperation to lead the independent church movement and to establish the Chinese Patriotic Association. His answer was, I am a Roman Catholic bishop. If I denounce the Holy Father, not only would I not be a bishop, I would not even be a Catholic. You can cut off my head, but you can never take away my duties. Bishop Kung vanished behind bars for 30 years. During those 30 years, he spent many long periods in isolation. Numerous requests to visit Bishop Kung in prison by international religious and human rights organizations and senior foreign government officials were rejected. He was not permitted to receive visitors, including his relatives, letters, or money to buy essentials, which are rights of other prisoners. The efforts for his release by his family, led by his nephew, Joseph Kung, by human rights organizations, including Amnesty International, Red Cross, and the United States government, never ceased. In 1985, he was released from jail to serve another term of 10 years of house arrest under the custody of those patriotic association bishops who betrayed him and betrayed the Pope and who usurped his diocese. In an article, immediately after his release from jail, the New York Times said that the ambiguous wording of the Chinese news agency suggested that the authorities, not the bishop, might have relented. After two and a half years of house arrest, he was officially released. However, his charge of being a counter-revolutionary was never exonerated. In 1988, his nephew, Joseph Kung, went to China twice and obtained permission to escort him to America in order to receive proper medical care. Shortly before Bishop Kung was released from jail, he was permitted to join a banquet organized by the Shanghai government to welcome His Eminence Cardinal Jaime Sin, Archbishop of Manila, Philippines, on a friendship visit. This was the first time that Bishop Kung had met a visiting bishop from the Universal Church since his imprisonment. Cardinal Sin and Bishop Kung were seated on opposite ends of the table, separated by more than 20 communists and had no chance to exchange words privately. During the dinner, Cardinal Sin suggested that each person should sing a song to celebrate. When the time came for Bishop Kung to sing, in the presence of the Chinese government officials and the Patriotic Association bishops, he looked directly at Cardinal Sin and sang, Tu es Petrus es superang Petra maidificabo ecclesiam. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church a song of faith proclaiming the supreme authority of the Pope. Bishop Kung conveyed to Cardinal Sin that in all his years of captivity he remained faithful to God, to his church, and to the Pope. After the banquet, Aloysius Jin, the Chinese Catholic Patriotic Association's Bishop of Shanghai, rebuked Cardinal Kung, What are you trying to do? Showing your position? 
Cardinal Kung quietly answered, It is not necessary to show my position. My position has never changed. Cardinal Sin immediately carried Cardinal Kung's message to the Holy Father and announced to the world, This man of God never faltered in his love for his church or his people, despite unimaginable suffering, isolation, and pain. The late Bishop Walter Curtis, the Roman Catholic Bishop of Bridgeport, Connecticut at that time, invited Bishop Young to stay with the retired clergy of the Bridgeport Diocese upon his arrival in the United States. He remained a guest of the diocese, later headed by Bishop Edward Egan, for nine years until December 1997. When Pope John Paul II presented Cardinal Kung with his red hat in the consistory on June 29, 1991 in the Vatican, the 90-year-old Bishop Kung raised himself up from the wheelchair, put aside his cane, and walked up the steps to kneel at the foot of the pontiff. Visibly touched, the Holy Father lifted him up, gave him his cardinal's hat, then stood patiently as Cardinal Kung returned to his wheelchair to the sounds of an unprecedented seven-minute standing ovation from 9,000 guests in the audience hall in the Vatican. During the past 12 years, Cardinal Kung offered public masses in many parishes, in Catholic conferences, and on TV, gave interviews and homilies in the United States to bring the attention of the free world to the continued persecutions on the Roman Catholic Church in China. He remained the inspiration of the 9 to 10 million underground Roman Catholics in China and the hated enemy of the Chinese Communist government. In an interview with the Chinese press in New York on February 12, 1998, Mr. Yi Zhaowen, the director of the Religious Bureau of China, stated, Kung Pin Mei committed a serious crime by dividing the country and causing harm to its people. One month later, in March 1998, the Chinese government confiscated the passport of this then 97-year-old Cardinal Kung, officially exiling him. In 1997, when China's chairman Jiang Zemin visited the United States, Cardinal Kung appealed to him to allow religious freedom in China and release Catholics held in China's jail and labor camps. I respectfully appeal to you, Mr. Chairman, to defend the rights of the Chinese citizens to true religious freedom and to permit the Roman Catholics to maintain true religious freedom and to permit the Roman Catholics to maintain religious communion with the Pope in order to keep the fullness of their faith. May China, under your able leadership, be internationally known as a country which has true religious freedom. The appeal met only the deaf ear of the chairman. Cardinal Kung never ceased inviting prayers for those who had separated and joined the Communist Established Patriotic Association. Prior to his trip to Rome to attend the consistory in 1991, Bishop Kung addressed China through the airwaves of Voice of America, inviting the patriotic bishops to return to the Eternal City with him. In his Mission magazine in 1957, Bishop Fulton Sheen wrote, The West has its Menzenti, but the East has its Kung. God is glorified in his saints. His Eminence, Ignatius Cardinal Kung Pin Mei, died at 3.05 a.m. on March 12, 2000. He was 98 years of age. The Funeral of Cardinal Kung Cardinal Paul Shan Kuo Si of Taiwan said goodbye on Saturday, March 18 to his friend and peer, Ignatius Cardinal Kung Pin Mei, during an 11 a.m. funeral mass which attracted some 1,700 mourners to St. John the Evangelist Church in Stamford, Connecticut. I think that Cardinal Kung could feel, in his last moment of earthly life, that 
I have fought the good fight. I have finished this race. I have kept the faith. Sean, Bishop of Kasi, said during his homily, In both English and Mandarin, Cardinal Sean praised Cardinal Kung's devotion to God as a good shepherd of his flock and a faithful soldier of Christ. The night before, on Friday, March 17th, as the body of Cardinal Kung, dressed in white lace and golden garments in a mitre, lay in state at St. John the Evangelist Church, the local Catholic community prayed at a memorial mass celebrated by Bishop Edward Egan of the Diocese of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Friends, family, and parishioners paid tribute to the Cardinal at the intimate service. Wreaths and bouquets of flowers decorated the church. More than 100 people of different ethnic backgrounds attended the memorial mass, including some who were imprisoned with Cardinal Kung in China. Philomena C. 67 converted to Catholicism in 1949 and was a parishioner of then Bishop Kung in Shanghai until they were arrested September 8, 1955. She was imprisoned in a labor camp for the next seven years and then under house arrest until 1978 because she was a member of the Legion of Mary and also because she refused to denounce her bishop, Bishop Kung. Though C lives in Maryland, she has visited Cardinal Kung many times over the past dozen years while he was in Stanford. It means everything to be here tonight, C said after the service. I lost everything, my house, my family, I was beaten, but I still keep my faith. That's the most important thing. Cardinal Kung was my example. Kristen Kaziak, 47, drove from Front Royal, Virginia to be at the Friday evening service. A longtime admirer of Cardinal Kung, she said she heard of the Cardinal's death and funeral only the day before the wake and immediately got in the car to make it to Stanford in time. He's one of the greatest men of our time, Kaziak said. He stood for freedom of religion for millions of Chinese. I am so grateful to God to be able to be here to honor him. There are millions of Chinese who can't be here, so I came for them. Bishop Egan said that Cardinal Kung will forever be in the prayers and hearts of the diocese. It has been a privilege to host the Cardinal here in our diocese since 1988 when he was released from 30 years of imprisonment in solitary confinement under the communist regime in China in testimony to his faith. He gave a special thanks to Monsignor John Horgan, retired archivist of the diocese, for caring for Cardinal Kung as both confessor and an interpreter. Monsignor Stephen De Giovanni of St. John the Evangelist Church said he was amazed at the Cardinal's incredible gentleness. I think people were really taken with his fidelity to his church, especially in a time when people are so critical of the Roman Catholic Church, he said. Former President Bush and First Lady Barbara Bush sent a letter which was read at the funeral by the President's brother, Prescott Bush of Greenwich, Connecticut, expressing their condolences to the Kung family. Despite the adversities that life put in his way, Prescott Bush read, Cardinal Kung stands forever as an example of courage and faith. The pews at the funeral on Saturday were filled with people who had traveled long distances. Charles Tung, Taiwan's ambassador to the United States, paid last respects alongside Connecticut Public Safety Director Henry Lee, who represented Governor John G. Rowland. He was a shining example of courage and perseverance, said Tung. He was a true spiritual leader, said Lee. Everyone admired him. He's such a fantastic martyr, said Virginia Craig of Alexandria, Virginia, who came to the funeral with her husband, Alan. He suffered in a concentration camp for 30 years for our faith. He is one of the most wonderful men to have ever walked the earth. The Reverend Stephen Lee moved seven years ago from his native Taiwan to New York, where he's a priest at Our Lady of Christ in Elmhurst, Queens. It was very important for me to be here and hear them tell about the Cardinal's life and faith, Lee said after the service. He took care of his flock and followed Jesus. After the funeral, the casket, which was flanked with lavish flowers from the government of Taiwan, was brought outside the church where the procession of bishops and clergy crowded along the sidewalk. A few of the bishops sprinkled the casket with holy water before it was loaded into the hearse. Shortly afterward, on the same day, Mr. Joseph Kung, Cardinal Kung's nephew and the president of the Cardinal Kung Foundation, 
was accompanied by his wife Agnes and Monsignor Horgan on a flight that transported the Cardinal's body to California for burial. On Sunday, March 19th, at the Star of the Sea Church in San Francisco, Cardinal Sean and Father Raymond V. Dunn, S.J., a member of the Board of Directors of the Cardinal Kung Foundation, led a congregation of mourners in a bilingual rosary, alternately led by Cardinal Sean and Father Dunn in Chinese and English, respectively. The rosary was followed by a Chinese low mass celebrated by Cardinal Sean. The closing ceremonies came on Monday, March 20th, with a Latin Tridentine Mass at the Church of the Five Wounds in San Jose. Some 1,000 people attended the memorable liturgy as their prayers, lifted by the service's glorious Gregorian chant, were perhaps the first step towards the precious gift for the Church in China, the early canonization of Ignatius Cardinal Kung Ping Mei. Immediately after the Tridentine Mass, the Cardinal's body was transferred to a chapel at the Santa Clara Mission Cemetery and placed in a vault above ground. Six years previously, the body of another Chinese member of the Church's hierarchy and friend of Cardinal Kung, Archbishop Dominic Tong of Canton, had been placed in a vault in the same chapel and also above ground. Archbishop Tong died while visiting Cardinal Kung in Stamford in honor, at the time, of the Cardinal's 65th anniversary as a priest and his 45th as a bishop. Mr. Joseph Kung had also been the person who oversaw the Archbishop's body to the Santa Clara Mission Cemetery. That the bodies of these two Chinese bishops, ever faithful to the successor of Peter and devoted to their flocks in Canton and Shanghai despite all adversity, are interred above ground express the hope that one day their mortal remains will be transported to China and interred, each at the foot of the altar of his respective cathedral. The same hope was expressed when Cardinal Menzenti was interred above ground in Austria, and the hope was rewarded when his remains were transported back to Hungary. In the light of the late Bishop Fulton Sheen's statement, the West has its Menzenti, the East has its Kung. The hope rewarded by Menzenti's triumphal return will be completed when China will be known as the Shrine of Cardinal Kung. Cardinal Kung was once asked a question by a reporter during an interview, and the question was, Is the Fatima message known among Catholics in China? Has it had an impact on the Church in China? Cardinal Kung replied, The most effective help for our Chinese brothers and sisters in Christ is prayers. Without the prayers of the Universal Church, I and thousands of others would have found it very difficult to survive the 10, 15, 20, or even more than 30 years in lonely prisons. 10, 15, and 30 years represent a very long period of suffering without freedom, holy mass, sacraments, and religious books. It is not our strength and merit that help us to endure these sufferings, we survive by the grace of God and your prayers. I hope that your readers will pray to our Holy Mother to protect the bishops, clergy, and the faithful of the underground church. I also hope that your readers will pray for those brothers and sisters who choose to be separated from our Lord so that they will return to the one fold and one shepherd. Your readers can also assist our Chinese brothers and sisters by supporting the local underground church financially. It is difficult for Catholics in America to imagine the extreme poverty of the underground church. All of their properties were confiscated by the government. Many seminarians have never owned a Bible. They have to hand copy the Bible page by page. Many loyal priests and bishops are over 75 years of age. They are living on subsistence unless they compromise their faith and join the Patriotic Association. Because the government has transferred all the properties of the Roman Catholic Church to the Catholic Patriotic Association and confiscated many personal properties of the bishops and priests, the underground church desperately needs money to support the priests in their apostolic work. Any amount of donation will be gratefully accepted. The Cardinal Kung Foundation is a non-profit and tax-exempt foundation working exclusively for the Roman Catholic Church in China.